Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Lilith and whenever I see Lilith I know that I'm in for a very exciting and fun run to, to, to be played as just because even if you get a combination of my items you're already used to you know that it's going to be a unique run just because of the way you control the character you maybe never really know how it's going to affect your incubus and even if you do shooting will be just a different experience altogether I think that's what really gives Lilith its uniqueness but because of that impediment, you really should never take terrible items. Like maybe in this situation, I did take Dr. Fetus. I'm not trying to say that Dr. Fetus is a terrible item at all. I think it's actually a very good item. And the point I'm trying to make is that you probably should never take Dr. Fetus if you're just concerned for score. Because I think it's going to hurt your score more than it's going to help it. Just because it, it tends to be one of those suicidal items, even though it's very strong. Obviously it gives you advantages like having infinite bombs, so being able to blow up just everything in your side. You deal insane amounts of damage, you can find all those secret rooms and second secret rooms. Which is especially important on this daily that only goes to mom's foot, because having more rooms means you get more points. And not only more points, but also more, ch more chances to find Ewa's runes, so you can go further. And going further is basically everything that's important in runs that only go to Mom or Mom's heart. Because the the, the later floor do net you just so many more points that it's ridiculous. Like you you don't even have a, a chance if you don't go there. And, and having out of fritters does increase your chances of finding those Ewa's runes quite considerably, I would say, and for that reason, of course, it's a good pickup, but I think still the damage penalty it brings you, because every time you get hit with your own bombs, you're going to get hit for, I think, one full heart of damage, I'm not sure, maybe I just got hit for one full heart of damage in that situation, because there were two bombs there, and they managed to hit me on the same exact frame, um, but still, even, even if it's only half a heart of damage, you are going to get hit eventually a lot of times, and your damage penalty will be sky high through the roof, and it's just hard, I would say that you, obviously, you know, you don't try to get hit intentionally, but just some situation are, some, some situations are gonna be in the, the, the sense that you, you really can't escape that, because there will be too many enemies in the room, especially later on, if you only have flight, maybe spectral tears, things like that, uh, things can get very dicey in dodging both enemy shots and both the boss's shots or whatever you're fighting and having to dodge your own shots at the same time. And because the explosion radius is actually quite big, I would say, it's also kind of hard to guesstimate sometimes just how far you can be and not take damage. And sometimes you're just gonna be cornered and that's gonna be it. Still, I would say that picking it once in a blue moon is not a bad thing at all, just because having a way to deal with all the absurdity at once is is something that's very important for all of us. And, and I wouldn't say just take, take it to be silly, I would also say take it as a learning opportunity, because I think this not only does it increase the longevity of the game, by making it just a little bit more fun every, every now and then when you do have this crazy combination, it also makes you force yourself to play differently, and I think forcing yourself to play differently will have a better effect on your overall score later on. And for that reason I would say, you no, know, sometimes just don't be afraid to let loose a little bit. If you're really worried about score, you can always quit at the end and see just maybe how well you rank. I would, I would however, urge you to maybe just use this healing combination once or twice, just to see how it is. I really think it's much funner much more fun to play as Lilith whenever you, you have to worry about your bombs that are shooting. And what's even more surprising is that it wasn't actually that hard to, to, to shoot with her, um, which I, as I thought it would be, just because for some reason then the way that her incubus follows her makes it so natural to arc those shots that I really never felt like I didn't have any control over them. In fact, I felt like I had more control over them than when I just shoot regularly straight. And I think that, that that stems from the ability to maybe curve your shots just a little bit behind rocks, and, and that gives maybe an illusion of better control. But maybe that's just because I haven't used the item in a long time and it just feels maybe more potent than it is. Uh, but but yeah, the, the, the most important thing here is to, to, to remember I still that this is only a game and we should never judge ourselves for it and that we shouldn't just focus on the on the boring sides of it and just try to get a higher score but of course if that's what you're going for that's great but i'm just talking for myself obviously but what happens here is we also get a mysterious liquid which is the item which leaves green puddles usually whenever hit an enemy in this situation what happens is whenever your bomb explodes there's a grand green puddle on the floor and i think that's just a great uh, that's just a great way to work with this item because 
we, we also have a rotten baby which means that we are shooting flies on occasion and just having that puddle there to maybe weaken the enemies for us is going to be a very great help because some enemies it's they're just hard to deal with because like spiders there's so many of them they're small targets it's hard to maybe aim the shots properly to get them and for that reason having a way to deal with them indirectly like with the rotten baby which shoots flies or maybe like with the puddles is a, is a good way to go about it and for that reason i really like that extra layer of offense which is also defense in this situation th that will allow us to hopefully get a very good score so here I decide to take a little, I, I do a little bit of a crazy thing and I take the jar and you might be saying, okay, why the hell would you do that? And I'll show you later. I think this is one of the things that not a lot of people know about. I've, I've refrained from doing this just because I think it's a little bit cheap. It does seem like a glitch, but I still decide to do it. I think that this is the first time I'm doing it and probably the last one too. I just wanted to showcase it just, just for the sake. So if there are any avid viewers of this series who are watching you know, you're going to learn one trick that's going to boost your score by quite a lot whenever you do find the jar. So that's the only item you need, just the jar, and you'll see just exactly how it works when I get to the whoop to and start breaking the game just by a little bit. Thankfully here, we don't take Mom's Knife. There's not really no point in taking Mom's Knife. It does not synergize well with Dr. Fetus as far as I know. The only thing it does give you is the knife in front of you, but because you have to be worried about the dodging the bombs, there's really no reason to take it, I think. Like, sure, it's useful against maybe melee enemies. I did say that we need, or that it's useful to have a way to defend ourselves from enemies which rush us down, maybe. But in this situation, you know, I think that having the rotten baby and later on we get the demon baby as well, that's gonna be enough for us to just deal with enemies. That, that come too close to us in a very efficient manner and and the fact that the puddles are actually first of all they look super cool but they also leave a giant puddle of creep so like with regular tears you would only have small 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 puddles of green creep which would then damage enemies and they would only be useful if the enemies split up and maybe you would get the splitted enemies but in this situation because the puddle is so much bigger it does allow you to not only hit the enemy or maybe bosses, it also allows you to deal some after damage to them. And for that reason, I really like the synergy. I did not actually expect, uh, expect it to work like it did. In fact, I expected it not to synergize at all, but thankfully the DLC did add quite a lot of fun synergies in the game, and I'm really thankful for that. I really think that synergies make, make this game, and even when it's something as minor as this, just having a green puddle on the floor after your bombs explode, which might not seem like a big deal at all, I still, I, I think it does um, give a layer of complexity and uniqueness that you don't get in many other games, and I think that's obviously why we love this game. Thankfully boss rush is not too difficult for us, because we do have flight, which means we can fly over rock and spikes, and because the room is big we can use our shots, use our bombs quite effectively and not be too afraid of hitting ourselves. So for that reason I think Dr. Fetus is a good boss rush item. It seems like lately, or maybe not lately, but just in general, when we're playing Isaac, or when I'm playing Isaac, I just compare items if they're good for boss rush or not good for boss rush, but I think that's very important as well because having good boss rush items means that you're gonna be able to deal with it super efficiently and not only that, you'll also be able to get to Kash later uh, in, in a reasonable amount of time and you'll also be able to explore the Womb 1 and the Womb 2 and maybe consequentially even the last floor of when you're fighting Mom, so the Depths 2 or the Necropolis 2. So for that reason I think that having uh, an insight into which items work well for boss rush is the most important aspect whenever you're picking up items and I would still say that sometimes just replace items that maybe not might not be as good as, as you might think they are so maybe replace certain items like Book of Sin which they give you a few console points for items that maybe just increase your damage output in, in boss rush because I think that time you save is more important than the little DPS or maybe the little consumables you get, especially with an item like Book of Sin. I, maybe this was a bad example because Book of Sin is just not a very good item I in itself, but but I think having the ability to kind of shoot through those tedious rooms fast will not only help your game and your score, just because you'll get hit less, because of course, because you're spending less time in it, it will also help your mental health because there's nothing more 
frustrating, excruciating and fighting boss rush for like 20 minutes straight <laughs> and, and, and we all know how that is when you're just stuck on a super weak run and you have to deal with it and you just don't want to but you know that's what ends up happening so sometimes so I think it's important like I said to have insight into maybe what you find fun and what you don't find fun but for me I, like I said I do tend to view view items as either good for boss rush or maybe not as good for boss rush and for that reason that's why I might be mentioning it more than it might seem but at the same time like I said that's I feel like that's an important aspect of the game for me just not being too sluggish which is a which is a very ironic thing to say because I do spend half an hour breaking the game just on the next floor but you know like just case in point I'm trying to make that uh, here is when I started breaking the game but uh, the case in point I was trying to make is it's just a fun thing to think about I think just being able to know which items will speed up your game as opposed to so, so I guess you're trading score for fun and I think that's that's a distinction to every player has to make for himself but here you see me breaking the game with the the jar and that might have gone by fast just because I was blabbering about something else but it's very simple what you do is you, you find a lot of hearts, you put them in one room and what you do is just you pick them up and just use the jar to drop them again and then just pick them up again. The funny thing is whenever you pick up items in the jar you actually gain score but whenever you drop them out you don't lose that score that you gained which means that if you just use the jar over and over again you, you're, you'll get infinite points or and max out your, um, your, your consumable bonus which is very funny to think about because it's when you say it like that it's I think almost it's very very likely a glitch or a bug like this is not meant to be intended and the fact that we didn't have a better way to do it means I spent half an hour breaking the game and just getting like 10,000 points in total I mean in, in total I, I meant as in that's my total Shrek points I got about 13,000 Shrek points but in this scenario it was actually like I got about 3,000 points in total, which is obviously a very good haul, so if you can afford the time to spend it um, and you find the jar, that's one of the most sure ways, because that, that you only need one item to actually break the game, which is very ridiculous, like I said, it does seem like it's a bug, but at the same time, um, not a lot of people know about it, and maybe, you know, for, that's, a good, that's a good thing, but at the same time, people who don't know about it have this unfair disadvantage, so I feel like it's fair to at least point it out once, so for, for all of those who are watching, that there may be a bit more avid viewers, and you did see that, I hope that you learned something new from this. So our damage penalty was not that high, it's actually not much higher than it usually is for me because I do take, tend to take a lot of damage and I do tend to strive better on the worst runs and you can see just because we did break the game with just the jar, our score is actually very good so 13th is not the worst. By the way, I'm sorry maybe you noticed that this commentary wasn't as good, I tried re-recording it about 15 times but the fact is I, I've had some weird procedures done and I did you, I did mention I had I was sick before so it was actually quite difficult but I, I'm trying to pertain to the idea to release a video daily and for that reason I know that maybe my content will suffer a little bit but at the same time I hope that you enjoyed this run for what it was. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.